Hello. Hope you're ready for week two of the Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 2. Well, I thought it would be excellent this week to focus on the marriage between the embouchure and the air. Is it a good marriage? Is it having some problems? Um, you need to sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with both of them. Do you need to be the mediator between the two? And there's a good point. So one of the things we all know is if one of them isn't playing their part fully, the other one really gets ticked. And they'll get hurt, and it'll take a lot of mending process to get it back. And everyone who's ever blown out their chops knows that feeling. So, okay. I have some asthma. And no matter what situation I find myself in, I try to get the most out of it. And one of the things I've gotten because of the asthma is to understand more of the relationship at a very subtle level between the air and the embouchure. Many times we're told, you know, take the biggest breath you can. Well, that's great. I don't always think it's great, actually. But it is nice to have extra. But what if you don't have any extra? What are you going to do? Excuse me. What are you going to do? You have to develop a way to have greater embouchure efficiency so your embouchure doesn't need as much air to work. Now, amount of air is not equivalent to support. And that's one of the great things I've learned. Amount has nothing to do with support. Some people rely on amount for support. But in itself, it is not support. It's the direction of, and the upholdance, and many times the way that the air is blown, which creates the support. But you also need a supportive embouchure. So I found that playing soft is one of the greatest things for building efficiency in the embouchure. Um, and not in a loose, you know, way of playing soft, but actually where the upper and lower lip really have a good contact. And I had to do this when I had asthma because I still wanted to practice. I couldn't take a big breath or I'd cough. So I had to breathe through the nose. And in this, um, and I've been breathing through my nose for years for a lot of different things, whether it's circular breathing or just knowing that that was the more efficient thing to do, like in offbeats and stuff. I don't need a lot of air for offbeats. Um, and so I got used to playing with a little amount of air. So I would do exercises, any all of my exercises, um, just softer and through my nose. Now that's an excellent exercise. I started about a mezzo piano plus, and I shrink it down a little bit, and I have the less do at a softer dynamic. And I'll tell you, if you can get that little dupe to be really clear, it's a good sign that your embouchure has an excellent intactness and it's ready to speak at the slightest little bit of air that goes through it. And I'll tell you, that is such a comforting feeling to have that instead of thinking, you know, more air, more air, more air, um, to push through to make something happen. So I suggest doing that little exercise. Take any different scales and put your embouchure in a nice relaxed position, but pretty close together. Take a breath through the nose, play a note for three, four beats, and then with that little boop, play a few scales like that. Play some two octave scales like that and you'll be able to feel what notes feel more comfortable that way than others. 
And if you can get the other notes that don't feel comfortable to feel comfortable doing that, you will build a greater efficiency in your embouchure and a greater system of, of less movement. Because m- many times, less movement can be related to efficiency. Not in all cases, but in some cases. So, that's an excellent assignment for next week to build efficiencies. As well, take some of your excerpts that are loud. Take some of your etudes that you play louder, or your solos, and play them down about a dynamic. Or sometimes maybe a dynamic and a half. See what happens. See what else you discover. See how much you rely on, let's say, for example, loud playing to produce contrast. something like La Mala Third at about a mezzo plus dynamic like I just did. Maybe it creeped to mezzo. I don't even think it got to mezzo forte. But I tried to make different inflections in that dynamic. So it's just not related to volume. This builds greater efficiency, not only in your embouchure and your air usage, but in the way that you think about the music. Efficiency in the sense that it broadens your color and nuance and inflection scope. Everything's connected. This is our machinery, but what do we want to do with it? Also, you'll find that playing legato, soft, fluid scales and things, soft, it develops another part of your tone gets a certain sweet aspect of the polished, what it would call polished high overtones to appear. People hear the word high overtones and they think mm-hmm. aluminum. No, they don't always have to be aluminum or steely. They can be like the mm-hmm. when you rub a wine glass. <laughs> It can really help with all sorts of things to have more of those qualities. Okay? At the same time, you start building efficiency and you realize you don't need a lot of air to play loud. Now, that was pretty loud. If you were in the room, it would be pretty loud. I was just taking little sniff breaths. That time I didn't even take a breath, I just used the air that was in me. All of these things build efficiency. Whoops, almost dropped my horn, speaking of efficient. Um, All these things build efficiency. Oh, there's the French monkey. Anyone who has my recording, a new at home, knows that I wrote a piece for my parrot called the French monkey, and there she is. Isn't she beautiful? (laughs) Anyway, um, efficiency builds variety if you want it to because with efficiency you can have greater control with greater control you can have greater say over what you want to produce so get into that marriage of the embouchure and the air practice things really big practice things really really soft and see what your embouchure is saying about it, and see what your air is saying about it. Okay, see you next week.